Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I got my top 10 most carried knives of July 2021, and uh, what you see in front of you here, right off the back, are the two fixed blades that I that I EDC'd a good bit this month, and my uh, Demco AD 20.5. Um, I carried this one a lot in the shop as a beater. Um, and I also bought a deep carry pocket clip from Casey Lynch, or really from Blade HQ, but it's a, a Lynch deep carry pocket clip. It does sit over the thing, which I don't love, but uh, it goes in and out of the pocket pretty, pretty good. It doesn't sit on that landing pad that well anymore, so you are going to kind of hit on those grooves. It, it's not severe retention, so it doesn't mess up anything, but I love using this knife around the shop. Uh, and then the two fixed blades, this particular one right here actually came on a trip with me here recently. We went to Idaho to visit uh, my kid, one of my kids, and I took this ProTech SBR fixed blade. Um, I just finished the testing and the review will be uh, coming here shortly. Um... I got mixed feelings about the knife. It, it did pretty well, and that's all I'm gonna say for right now. I did enjoy using it in Idaho. Got this nice leather sheath from Chattanooga Leatherwork. And uh, also, I've been carrying this one. This is a knife, uh, it's a custom fixed blade. It's, it's in a pocket sheath from Oak City a Leather Supply. They do some, he does some excellent, excellent work. Love that two tone in there, the secondary color, that olive, and the fact that he has this pocket clip on there. I clip it to my front pocket whenever I, whenever I want to carry it with just one other folder or in my back pocket. It works well on both sides. Um, and I've been carrying this VL Knives fixed blade. Um, I think he's a maker out of Canada. The model is his OR, I think. I think it's O-R-E. That's what I'm looking at, the, the, the card. Here's the card. And the fact it's M4 steel at 64 to 65, that's what enticed me. There's his, his info right there. And I just sharpened this thing up, and wow. Uh, very impressed so far. It sharpened up very easily and took a wicked, wicked sharp edge. Uh, it, <laughs> yep, it bites it. As soon as I put my fingers down there, it, it grabs into the skin. So definitely been really enjoying this one. And I love these slips. I, I originally bought this sheath for, I uh, can't remember what knife, but it fit perfect for this one. I think the Briad for Guardian 3 is what I bought it for. All right, let's get into the, the top 10. For July, first up is coming from Bureau Engineering. This is the Frame Lock Axon. Um, I think I may like the Frame Lock better than my Micarta Liner Lock version. This one, I have that hand rub satin finish. Looks amazing. And wow, when I say smooth, stupid smooth, comfortable. Uh, you can easily front flip it now that that protrudes a little bit more. And I'm not even good at front flipping. This knife checks a lot of boxes for me, and he also fixed that uh, that hot spot I was getting from the other clip as well. So uh, I'll be carrying and using this one, and uh, I'm sure I'll probably do a video later on about this one. That is the Vero Engineering Axon. All right, next up is coming from Hinderer Knives. This is the Hinderer XM18 three-and-a-half-inch skinny slicer, DLT exclusive, no troll. <laughs> oh, yeah, try away. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, I tested this knife and reviewed it recently. If you hadn't seen it, go check it out. And I just I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I thought I would like the skinny scales more than the regular, but the uh, full size fills out the hand a little bit better. And I noticed with the skinny, I do feel that pocket clip a little bit more. And I think I may prefer that choil. Um, it's going to look kind of funny after sharpening it because you're going to be into that plunge grind. But either way, I still have been enjoying the knife. And 
getting a lot of carry time out of it. All right, next one is a fairly new acquisition, but it made it in the pocket of, uh, several times since I got it, and that is the Spyderco Smock Blade HQ Exclusive. Uh, this one is in M4 Steel. The, uh, the regular version is S30V with that uh, G10 carbon fiber laminate. The, the Jade is also part of the exclusive. And I must say, after taking out that retention detent ball, that second one, this one is probably the smoothest one I've owned. Uh, this is my, I have three smocks, two of the S30V ones and this one. And I may, depending on, um, depending on a few things, I may have a M4 smock for my uh, 10K giveaway whenever that happens. So y'all definitely stay tuned and you definitely want to be subscribed to enter. Oh, I also have a uh, MXG gear deep carry pocket clip that I swapped out on there. I love that clip. All right, number four. This one's kind of an odd one. This is the Tucson TS243 carbon fiber. Um, <laughs> this one got a good bit of pocket time mainly because I was I was breaking out a bunch of boxes and it's got a nice thin uh, full flight grind on here. And it's fairly comfortable and it's comfortable because look how thick. Those are some very, very thick handles and they're wide in this dimension. So it made for a good slicer, 14C28N. Uh, it is a front flipper as well. And you have that top flipper. The only thing that's kind of, it's like it has an identity crisis or something because if you looked at the scales and how thick, you know, that's pretty much like a frame lock in there and how thick those carbon fiber scales are and everything else. You, you would think, you know, rough, hard-use, rugged knife, but the stock isn't super thick, and it's, I mean, look at that, look at that needle-like point. So, I don't know. I think I would have really enjoyed this one a lot more if they would have kept it all, like, slim with that nice, slicey blade, but that's just me, and that's just my opinion, so there you go. I like the pocket clip. Love how they... They did this rounding right there. They do a great job always of uh, hitting all the little fine details. That is the Tucson TS243 carbon fiber and 14C28N. Next up is another brand new one that I picked up. This is the Spider Co. Uh, Tough DLT exclusive. Once again, what is my second DLT? Oh, third? I don't know. Something like that. And I do apologize, I know a lot of these aren't available, but I think you still get this one. Some of them are. Uh, the DLT Exclusive Tough has the Crewwear. My original one has CPM3V and it's non-coated. This one has this beautiful coating on there, I like it. And then you also have this green peel ply G10 instead of the black uh, golf ball dimple G10 and just flat titanium instead of the dip, the the dimple that is kind of like a grayish color i like the overall aesthetics and it's smooth out of box so far i've been enjoying this one spider coat tough the original one has been discontinued it's really cool seeing some of these older models come back from you know when i first kind of got back into into the hobby all right next up is coming from les george this is the les george vecp Flipper, um, I think this is the V4, correct me if I'm wrong. I've always, always, always loved uh, Les George's design aesthetics. I love his classic looking blade shape with this ramp up here. It just looks so classy in my opinion. It's like a classy tactical if that's a thing. Um, of course, there's a few things that I don't like about the knife and a few things that I may send it back for, but uh, we'll talk about that in the full review. I did add this uh, this Lynch Benchmade Deep Carry Pocket Clip on there. works perfectly, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, like I said, this one may be going back. I think mainly because of the detent. If you do a light switch, it's just not, it's not that smooth. I, all my ones I've owned before this, on phosphor bronze were way smoother than this one on bearing so 
I don't know. Still trying to decide. Les Jord, VECP Mid-Tech. All right, next one up. <laughs> I just did the unboxing for this other day, but I had lost the unboxing. So I've been having this one for a little while now. And uh, this is the Varga Knives uh, VBR, which stands for Varga by Riot. This thing just has a custom look and feel. I think I said... I think that's how I titled my unboxing. It it just does. I mean, look at this beautiful, like polished, stone washed, uh, deep hollow on there. Then you have this like belt satin on the flat right there, and on the flats up here, the swedge is stone washed. And you have this beautiful green micarta, seamless. And if you could just feel the action on this thing, I mean, it's like buttery smooth. Comes out with authority, comfortable in hand. Just a very cool knife. That is the Varga VBR. <coughs> All right, next up's coming from Terrain365, and it is the Otter Flip. Um, the cool thing about this knife is it's completely rust-proof. It has uh, their trademarked Dendrit co Cobalt cast. I, I don't know, it's not really steel but casted, uh, whatever you want to call it. And it's basically, uh, yeah, Dendro Cobalt, and their trademark name is Teravantium. Um, it's completely rust-proof, and it's supposed to <coughs> hold, like, a working edge for a long time, like a toothy working edge. Um, I tested that with the, which one was it? The, uh... The frame lock with a thumb stud like this, can uh, the Invictus, and it did pretty well. I plan on testing this one just like that. Um, I like the size on this one. I like the contoured scales. Uh, I wish it had some a little bit more flair to it. It's just very plain, even though plain's not always bad. I just think this knife would have been awesome with like a bolster with some micarta or something. I don't know. Maybe Prometheus will will let one out like that in M390. But I like the knife so far. That is the Train 365 Otter Flip. Two more. Next up is coming up from, I think, Russia. And it's the Cherbakov uh, Small Swift. Man, I'm torn with this knife. I've been carrying it a lot because I just, I, I like a lot about it. The action is just very, very like i don't know it's hard to explain it's got that smooth hydraulic action this one's on bearings comes out with authority it's comfortable in hand i like the simplistic lines of the knife uh it, it's a liner lock i like that that it's a titanium liner lock my biggest complaints with this knife <laughs> are the single thumb stud I, it, I think this would have been an excellent knife to spotty flick m390 and I think my biggest complaint of all is this god-awful pocket clip. I mean, this thing is so hard to get it in and out of the pocket. I, can, I can't even lift this thing up. It's not terrible with my really thin, lightweight shorts, but when I'm not wearing those, this one can't be carried. So uh, something that I'll either have to fix or it'll have to go bye-bye. So there you go. That is the, the Trebrikoff small swift and last but certainly not least coming from attention to detail i just can't seem to get these out of the rotation and that is my mark one medium this one is um, also 3v and this one does not have a compound grind like my other one i just i love the look of this one i love the action it's nice and comfortable the, the the scales just look sweet. It's like a diamond pit uh, pattern on there that he knocked off the tips. So it's it's nice and smooth. So it's not overly aggressive. And they're also contoured. So just a very cool knife. I just wish I wish it had a thumb stud or a blade hole as well. That would make it even better. Um I added this artisan cutlery pocket clip. I think it looks better and it works a lot better than the spring clip. He he uh, offers a mill titanium clip. I didn't notice that until after I uh, had 
put this on there, but there you go. That is my top 10 knives that I that made it into my pocket in July 2021. Uh, I would love to hear what, what you carried most in July. And uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.